Hey, how's it going everybody? It's the Game Economist back with another Dark Souls 3 PvP guide. Today I'll be using the Onikiri and Ubadachi paired katanas. Onikiri and Ubadachi used to be really powerful. The Karthus Rouge hadn't been nerfed, a katana running attack hadn't been nerfed, and the Oni Slayer weapon art hadn't been nerfed. <laughs> right? So you can see it's been taken down quite a lot. Uh, but basically what people would do in the past is they would infuse it to hollow, put points into luck, put on a Karthus Rouge, and bleed people out in a, the weapon art true combo. They'd use the Oni Slayer weapon art, then they'd true combo that with the L1, and you would either bleed out or you would be almost bled out, at which point they could just follow up with the running attack. It was really easy. But yeah, so back then it was really strong. And then of course, the nerf to the Karthus Rouge means that you're not gonna get that uh, true combo bleed out. Uh, the nerf to the Oni Slayer, you know, I didn't use this weapon before they nerfed it, but I could tell right after the nerf, it kind of disappeared. People didn't want to use this weapon as much. And then finally, maybe the nail in the coffin, the running attack to katanas was nerfed too. And I think that was just too much. You almost never run into the Onikiri and Ubudachi anymore. You still run into things like the frayed blade and the washing pole, but Onikiri Ubudachi, I mean, it's like once in a blue moon that I run into these weapons. And so hopefully this video kind of shows how you might try to use them nowadays or what it would look like if you were using them. Maybe it'll, uh, maybe it'll interest some of you guys to give them another shot. For the build, I went with a dark build. That's right, if you go with a hollow infusion or let's say a refined infusion, the problem is that you're doing pure physical damage and that means somebody who is smart with a Black Knight shield is going to easily counter you. Shields counter katanas anyways, right? Katanas running attack, that's supposed to be their best move. Well, the shields come out and then, especially if you can't deal any chip damage, it's going to be a tough fight. It certainly isn't going to be viable in a high tier duel. So I went, of course, with a Dark Infusion. Yeah, you know, if you guys ever wonder why I go with Dark rather than Chaos, it's because the Black Knight shield gets better fire uh, absorption than it does dark absorption. It's a really simple reason, right? So, yeah, we go with the dark infusion, and then uh, we want to make sure that we have a few utility items with us as well. Uh, you know, when I, the AR on the dark infusion was coming out to over 450, which is competitive damage, that's actually really good, because on top of that, you have your L1 combo, right? L1, L1, and when you land that, it deals like Somewhere between 600 and 700 damage is, is plenty, is terrific, right? So that is going to cover what build I recommend, as well as the kind of damage output you get from the weapon. I want to talk a little bit about the weapon art, Oni Slayer. Okay, so again, it used to be that everybody played this weapon, then they nerfed the Oni Slayer, and you kind of saw the Onikiri Ubadachi disappear. What I noticed when I was using the weapon art just the other day so that the tracking's not very good on it, <laughs> right? It doesn't track very good. It certainly doesn't have a lot of forward momentum. So if you use it and they're not already in it, there's a very good chance you're not gonna catch them. They have to be touching you basically to get caught by this weapon art. Uh, in fact, the best way to catch people is to kind of uh, make a hard prediction on them, like uh, hard read them, I should say, and just jump right into their attack and that will allow you to basically trade with them and at the end of the trade, you get to use your L1, which is a true combo with the weapon art. So weapon art L1, and again, you'll do this by trading with your opponent. That's the most consistent way to get it out. Because if you try to use it on an opponent who's just in a neutral stance, he's not attacking, he gets plenty of time to roll away from the move, right? It has a wind up at the beginning. It does have a little bit of a stun. You know, if your opponent truly is touching you, it has a little bit of a stun if they don't uh, jump sooner, but if they're not technically touching you, it's not gonna stun them and they have plenty of time to react to the actual active frames of the move, okay? So I actually wasn't a big fan of the weapon art. It was inconsistent, I think is probably the right word. There would be these situations where I actually read them correctly, but they would use an attack and their body would like, their body would bend over for that attack, right? It would lean over. And then Oni Slayer would just 
completely missed them. It was, even though that I read them correctly, it would just go right past them, and then, yeah, they would just get a free ride. <laughs> Sometimes I would get punished. Well, and speaking of which, if you miss the Oni Slayer, it has a lot of recovery frames, so your opponent gets plenty of time to get a neutral attack off on you, like a neutral R1, and that is kind of like a worst case situation. Well, so I guess a good way to describe the Oni Slayer then, because of its inconsistency, and because it has a lot of recovery frames, it's kind of a high risk, high reward move. Miss it and get punished, or land it and deal about 600 damage, right? So, yeah, I have to say, for, for hardcore duels, I'm not a big fan of the weapon art. There's another thing, I always rag on paired weapons for this. When you have a paired weapon, it means that you're typically not offhanding a useful or powerful offhand weapon. Right, that would be a crossbow, that would be the dragon head shield, that would be the black knight shield. You certainly can do that, right? But you tend to have it put away because what you're... You, let, me, let me put it this way, right? If you were just going to one hand the Onikiri Ubadachi and then have a dragon shield in your offhand, why wouldn't you just be using the washing pole? You know what I mean? Or why wouldn't you just be using uh, the frayed blade? You, you don't even need to use the Onikiri Ubadachi. And so, it's really important uh, for the Onikiri and Ubadachi's L1 attacks to be useful. For the Onikiri and Ubadachi's weapon art to be useful. Because, yeah, if you don't find them useful enough, you end up asking yourself, why am I not just offhanding a crossbow with this, right? That just makes more sense. Or a parry weapon, or whatever it is, right? So yeah, but here's the nice thing about Onikiri and Ubadachi. As a paired weapon, I actually kind of liked the L1 attacks. It took a little while to get used to them. You see, when you're in a neutral stance and you're using the first L1, uh, you'll notice the little he takes the little tiny blade in his animation and he does a horizontal swipe with it. So yeah, this is a katana where the L1 has unusually good horizontal hitboxes in close range. You see, because that first swipe has kind of shorter range than the average katana. And then the second swipe comes out. The second swipe has much better range. So yeah, it was really the, kind of this odd thing where you could use the L1 to cover people who are right next to you and that first blade would hit them. Or you could use it to poke people who were further away from you. You could use it to space, right? Because again, the second swing actually has a lot of range. Really strange. Uh, but yeah, if you catch people in the L1, the neutral L1, you're going to deal plenty of damage. And of course, of course, that's held back by the fact that katana neutral attacks are kind of slow. They're, uh, I can't tell if they're faster than great swords. Maybe I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison someday. They feel about the speed of a great sword, to be honest with you. And that's pretty bad because they definitely don't have the poise or the hyper armor of a great sword, <laughs> right? You do have a poise option, this is that weapon art, but none of the other moves have uh, poise, no, or hyper armor. Okay, and I think that's mostly everything I wanted to say. You don't want a hollow build, you don't want a quality build, because you're gonna get countered by the Black Knight shield. You don't want a buffed build, because smart players outplay buffed builds, right? So you're gonna end up with the dark build that does decent damage. You can use the Oni Slayer weapon art, but it's very risky to use it. You know, like I said, high risk, high reward. It doesn't track very well, and sometimes it misses for no reason. Uh, the neutral L1 is actually pretty good, uh, and then you have the basic uh, R1, which, by the way, I, I noticed if you catch an opponent in the R1, you could jump right into the weapon art, and for a lot of players, that actually catches them off guard. Like, maybe they're not tapping the roll button, or maybe you're just close enough to them that you tag them anyways. So you can actually go R1 weapon art. It's not a true combo, it's kind of like a pseudo combo, okay? It's kind of like, uh, it's just something you can try out. Uh, and if you do that, it doesn't lead into the, um, it doesn't lead into the weapon art L1 true combo. You can only go R1 weapon art, right? And it, the L1 won't true combo. So yeah, j I just wanna add that as well. Uh, you, when I was fighting meta weapons, uh, once again, I felt like I was getting outplayed by the fact that my neutral R1 and my neutral L1 are too slow. And then you have your basic running attack and the charged R2. I was a big fan of the charged R2. I really liked that. Also, another thing I was learning by the end of using this weapon 
is that you go into the running er, not the running attack you go into the rolling attack and use a charged r2 and you hold on to that r2 until your opponent steps into range and then you let it go so the r2 out of rolling attack was actually kind of good oh i should also mention the running l1 attack was terrible has really bad tracking and it, like a weird delay that doesn't hit anybody so i i didn't even mess around with that at some point i just wrote it off of my list of things to try it's not worth it so yeah uh this weapon i think definitely breaks into the b tier i think it's going to be a little bit of a lower b tier and that has more to do with the struggles of using a katana than it has to do with this particular katana. Katanas, they're, they're, some of them I think are going to be really good, but this is tr just going to be about the quality of a, a typical katana, right? So uh, we're going to go with B-. minus. I don't think it's bad enough to drop it into the C tier, but I don't think it's good enough for it to break into the upper B tier or into the A tier. Alright, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. I just want to thank y'all so much.